I'm Dean Mundy, and you're tuned in to IFE Top 10. Well, as I stated, I wanted to be an artist. So, you know, I was like probably 10, 11, and had a dream to be an artist. I saw all these artists. I grew up around entertainment, grew up around some of the biggest back then. You had uh, Chicken Chess, Super Beagle, you know, all of those guys were around me growing up. You know, some of the some of the bigger dance hall name within that era. You know, um, you're talking about Metro Media, Jim, Jimmy, Tanta Metro, all of the Metro Media sound system set up. You know, I had sound system in my yard, uh, Stone Love. You know, they used to come to my yard to tune that sound system, that type. So I grew up around entertainment, but I wanted to be an artist. You know, that's what I knew. I thought it was about being an artist. And a friend of mine said, but you know, Tony Kelly, why don't ask Tony Kelly to produce a song with you? I go, no, I'm not going to ask Tony. So they said, well, go ask Super Beagle. Super Beagle at that point in time was a DJ, and he and I was real close. So I went to Super Beagle and I said, Beagle, I want an artist. And Beagle said, no, that not going to work. You're too cute. Kind of, as a 11 year old, that was kind of damning. You know, it affected me a lot. I went around for like a year screwing up my face cause, you know, I want an artist and you can't look cute. So the face of a wrench cause back then it was a, a wrench up face thing. And my friend said, yo, be you not going to produce me? Be you not going to work with you? This was probably like a year after. And he said, go ask Tony Kelly. So I went to Tony Kelly and said, I want to be an artist. Tony laughed and I thought he was going to come with one of that, you know, the image type thing. And he go, nah, man, not going to make you an artist. I'm going to give you something that will last you a lifetime. I said, what's that? He said, come check me tomorrow. When I went by his house, he was building beats. I was like, what's that? He said, oh, I have a project doing and I'm just building some beats. I said, but I do that. He said, what do you mean you do that? I said, I build beats. He said, what do you use and build beats? Uh, I said, I got a triple B um, drum machine that my, my uncle used to play drums for a Sagittarius band. I said, that my uncle gave me. He was like, really? Let me hear your beat. And I ran. I ran for like 25 minutes from my drum machine and stuff. Came, set up, played the beat. I was like, all right, this is cool, but I'm going to carry to the studio. My teacher ought to be an engineer. First time in the studio. Back then, I, um, where I'm from, Tony Kelly, Dave Kelly, Bujo, Wayne Wonder, Little Lenny. It's called Grafton. So most of the artists who was from East Kingston, they always congregate around that section. So when I went in the studio, Bujo was recording, all right? So remember, I'm from the same location, so I know Bujo and all of them real well. And Bujo was recording, I went, went in the studio, Bujo stopped recording, and I said, who is that? You know, in the typical Bujo way, yo, who that? And I was like, yo, it's me. He said, I don't know me, you know. I don't want a new man in my studio, come out. Once again, you're talking, I'm young, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, 13, 14, because the year passed with Super Beagle thing, 13, 14. I was like, wow, you know, maybe I'm not going to be an artist, maybe I'm not going to be an engineer. They just ran me out of the studio. So I was outside, and Bushy came outside, and Bushy was like, yo, Dino, Wagwan, why are you outside? Things are Tony up here, come see you. I said, I just came in and you run me out. He said, oh, are you stay outside then now? <laughs> I'm saying so I realized that it was a thing you know he was so he turned to me and said yo if you want it you got to go inside and get it you got to go inside you know people run you out you got to go right back inside so that was my first journey Tony Kelly carried me in you know started apprentice engineering because in Jamaica it's not a school thing it is sit under the wing of somebody who's already established and do the apprenticeship so that was my start Wow, I think I'm still being an apprentice after 26 years. I can't tell you how long it takes. Like every day you learn something new in this business. So personally, I still feel like I'm, I'm in the apprenticeship. No matter how much I've done, I just always still feel like I'm learning. I can't give up on something that was the, the foundation of, of my creativity. What happened was that instead of doing the recordings myself, I started writing. I started giving it to, to artists. So I would have the idea out of the song, so I became an a engineer, producer, songwriter.
to be 100, my artist was definitely Bujo and Wayne Wonder. You know, I I loved everything that Wayne Wonder and Bujo did. And when I got an opportunity to write with Wayne Wonder, that to me it was like, it was something major for me at that point in time. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I had a hand in a lot of different artists, you know, how they, they're breaking points and writing different songs for different artists and exposing different artists, actually giving other artists that you know to this day opportunities to express themselves on tracks. primary person in my engineering was a guy called Andrew Thomas. You need to look him up. Andrew is one of the best. All right. So outside of Tony Kelly and Dave Kelly, who were like my brothers, the industry itself has them as my brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we act the same way in terms of how we get along, literally like a family. You know, outside of them, uh, Stephen Stanley helped me in learning the mixing aspect of engineering, you know what I'm saying? The creativity behind the mixing. There was Bulby. You know, I was always an apprentice to patch cables back in my era. I'm sorry, you know, we had it was analog, we had to patch cables, we didn't have any apps, no plugins, no VSTs, you know what I'm saying? We had to patch cables to get this done. So it was um Bulby York, Mafia and Fluxy, who is from UK, you know what I'm saying? They would come to Jamaica and do some stuff for Donovan Jeremy because I was working at Penthouse Studio then at that time. You know, definitely Stephen Stanley. Um Yeah, that that was it. Sly, Sly, Sly was also one of my my major influences, you know, because as an apprentice to be working along with these guys, patching, learning the tricks, learning the trades, the different aspects, how they organize the beats, how they, they you know, it's about the arrangement and how they compose. So we say compose, anything about classical music. No, in the studio, these guys composed. You know what I'm saying? I, I worked along with Firehouse Crew, I worked along with um, Steely and Cleave, you know. It was it was endless. I was in I was at the the base that I was at, which was Pentos recording studio. Everybody came through Pentos. You know what I'm saying? And with them coming through Pentos and you being the apprentice, you know, it was it was a joy for them to go, Prento, do this, Prento, go get the cable. However, I was a different style of printer. So when a printer did this, say, you're mad, man. We're not going to want to learn that. You know what I'm saying? So they realized that I had that type of personality. So everybody, they were, they were you know, it's, it, it was diverse in terms of the talents that came through. And they were all on the same page, which they were, they were happy to teach. As long as you're happy to learn. You know, and I say it that way because there, it wasn't everybody that wanted to learn. So they're there to learn, but you didn't want to learn. And I think they looked at that type of stuff to see, you know, who is that guy that wants to learn? I'll teach you. Wow, I'm going to forget a lot. I'm not going to lie. Uh, my major, I would say, uh, I wrote a lot of songs for being a man. Uh, started working along with Shocking Bass, so most of the Shocking Bass artists in from 94. So Bean Man, Complimentary, Little Kirk, Snagopus, um, Devante, uh, Wayne Wonder. I've done. Wow, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it right there. I've, I've done a lot of. A lot of Right now, my artist is Craig T from TOK. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud to say I'm writing along with Craig. The talent level is is off the chain, you know. So it makes it it gives you that energy to want to write and want to contribute and want to get along with what's going on on the track. I do not remember the moment the opportunity came because Moses, sorry, Beanie Man. Which is being much everybody, Moses for me. Moses and I were party. You know what I'm saying? So we hung out. If it was what we call the road, it was me and him at the road. So he was he was instrumental in, in saying what I had to say, put it that way. So if I had the idea, he was happy to express the idea that I had. You know what I'm saying? So we would sit there, we would vibe. We'd vibe naturally, not even knowing that we're writing a song. And I said, we vibe arguing with the label. You know what I'm saying? Hence is how Romy came up. You know, he and I wrote uh, Romy together. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people don't know, but it's there. He and I did Romy. We did 
I did about 31, I got a, I think roughly 31 number ones with these. You know, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably around that tear off my garments. You know, we did, we did a lot of tracks back right then. But he was happy to express them. I was happy to collab with him when he had an idea. So, and I was his personal engineer from 94 to, till about 2000. So wherever he was, I was there as well. Um, Monster Look for Many Moons of Moses. Uh, we did a lot on the Many Moons album. Um, you put me on a spot. I cannot remember a lot of them. Um, Mm, testing, testing, one, two, uh, um, you're about luck. Uh, it's also, let's say, oh, man, it's too much, too much. I think we're still searching for that answer, you know. Some people say it's the air, some people say it's the water, some people say it's the yam, some people say, you know, but I just think it's, it's, it's the environment. It's, it's the word, it's Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? There's a thing about this island, and I'll speak from a point where I decided to migrate. And not being here, the passion of wanting to be here was so major, it was so much that I couldn't sustain it anymore, I had to come back, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's Jamaica. Uh, I can't say it any, any other way. There is nothing that anyone can put their hands on to say, this is why the people are so talented. But we've always figured stuff out, figured a way to survive. So I think that survival mentality has increased our creativity. So whether we're creating to eat, creating to entertain, creating to survive, creating to earn, it's just that creativity. So our mind is it's ingrained. I love anything that Jamaican artists do. Whether it is my cup of tea or coffee, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm a supporter of Jamaica and I'm a supporter of music. Then I'm a big supporter of Jamaican music. So whatever it is that is for us Jamaican, I'm, I'm a major supporter. I love to see the new kids. I, love, I don't love everything they do, but I love that they're doing it. Well, see, I'm an old school, right? So, you know, I'm a throwback, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fitted, you know. I use the term reggae. Whatever is outside of Jamaica, it's reggae. That's our umbrella. Dance hall used to be our space where we express. So I started when we, dance hall, what you call dance hall, wasn't being played on radio. So we had to go and find a space for the music, which is actually the dance hall. So what started happening is that like most industry, you have a commercial and you have an underground. The commercial is reggae, the underground was dance hall. So when you wanted to know what's hot in the streets, you had to go into the dance hall. As time, time went on and dance hall music, the music which was played in the dance hall, started getting more popular. The genre called dance hall to, to um, earth. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the roots come from. But for me, I go and I say reggae. But internationally, whatever comes out of Jamaica, is considered reggae. It could be roots rock, reggae, cultural, reggae, dancehall, reggae. These are the subgenres under the genre, which is reggae. Reggae, reggae as, it, as a spearhead or as a name, as a brand, we're so influential to every other music that it's nothing, it, has, it wasn't anything new to me. When I, I, what I enjoyed was to see other cultures embrace what we have as reggae, regardless if we're spitting fast and they say, oh, reggae rap, you know what I'm saying? Or we slow it down and say, reggae R&B, you know what I'm saying? So it is just the culture that we had, how it went out. Now, for me, I was influenced by uh, a lot of hip hop and rap music growing up because of how my, my own personal family culture is being between the United States and Jamaica. I already had that influence, so it sounded back then in the 90, 93, 94, 95, the early Beanie Man, what gave the, the twist or the flavor for him was the mere fact that 
we were already writing with an international flavor or building beats that already had that crossover sound or you know very commercial very bubblegum in and of itself so it was like oh he has all these melodies oh he has all these lyrics oh you know, it was more melodies than even lyrics because of that international flavor so i would say you know as time go on my influence that was my early influence is what actually helped to spur and influence a lot of what happened and what's happening now for me myself um you know i could always trace back to some stuff for some of these kids but the truth is i just think everybody's putting who they are it's their internal it's, it's a them that is being being expressed right now well i am no more in the business of music you understand because it's two industries you have the music industry and the music business now i've always been fluid when when there was a fight back, a hit back against digital in the analog era. But remember, I'm old school, 26 years. I'm from cassettes, you know, let me start even further than that. I'm from ADATs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to cassettes, two tracks to 16 tracks, 24 tracks. And a lot of people were like, oh, he lying. No, 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 no. I used to splice two tracks with Donovan Jeremy and put them together Marcia Griffith songs, you know what I'm saying? So I started real early. So I, I did the transition. When I heard digital was coming in, I wanted to know what that was. So I'm one of those who believe there will always be changes. It's what you do with the changes. So I embrace change. So with, in terms of the creativity, I embrace changes up to the digital age. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the business, music is more popular today than it has ever been in the history of music. It may not be earning the same way, because I used to earn from record sales. You know, I've talked about my publishing, talking about my mechanical royalties. I, I used to earn from record sales. Now we're talking about streaming. Yeah, you're earning less, but you're marketing to more. So there may be changes, but in every transition, there's a good and there's a bad. It's just for you to look at the good and see the advantage. There's a lot of advantages right now to digital age, to the web. But more popular than it's ever been. More people hearing your music more possibility for endorsement, more possibility for creativity, more streaming. So, you know, it's, it's just a change, that's all it is. Quality has changed because of the production aspect. Now, every Joe with a computer can be a producer. So what you'll find is that you'll find some quality that will be, be lost from when we came in the studio and everything was done on in a studio, in a professional environment. However, what I like about every Joe who has a computer is that everybody is able to express their creativity. So those who make it, you can listen to somebody creative and pull that low quality to a high quality. They have an outlet, let them express themselves. Take the outlet, then you do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? We all play a role. Stop being on top saying, eh, that doesn't sound good. No, the quality may not sound good, but listen to the creativity. Go get him, bring him up. Wow, so we weren't always independent. There was an era where reggae was where it was. Now remember, that's all didn't exist. All right, that's all was a space. And even when we're becoming commercial as that's all, reggae is the global word for any music that is out of Jamaica, reggae. So, you know, Shabba era with Shabba, Lady Patra, um, Super Cat, there was Epic who came as Science Spectrum. The um, Richie Stevens, um, Megabanta, they were, they were a part of Capital Records. You know what I'm saying? So record labels used to come to Jamaica and sign Jamaican artists. So we had an era where they looked inwards to what's going on in Jamaica. But you see, there's politics in everything. There's politics in business. There's politics in the music industry. So I won't go in depth to why they came out, but there was a, a time period when it was about the Jamaican artists. You know, I'm hoping that recycles itself again because there's a gap. We still have a lot to offer. And I think now we're actually a little bit more professional in how we're going to offer those stuff to the international market. As I stated earlier, and there's two music, the music industry and the music business. We're still caught in the music industry. For us to, to elevate and to actually make that transition to become that global competitor 
not competitor in terms of the creativity, but competitor in terms of commerce, we have to start looking at the music business. The business of music is what those companies want to see. Your creativity, the industry, is just a form of earning for their business. So if we can't separate the two, we'll always be all happy about being creative in the industry. But then if you can't make me a dollar, it's all about ROIs, return on your investment. If I'm investing in you, what's my return? Where's the music business? So for Jamaica, I think we need to start teaching these young guys a little bit more about the business of music. Branding, you know what I'm saying? It's it's how do you want to be portrayed to the rest of the world? What are you offering? So we don't have to be cultural. That's that's a fact. If your music doesn't have a market, it will die a natural death. You know, we don't have to go, oh, we have to speak rude, we have to talk reality. Any any aspect of creativity is actually reality. Reality is anything that's real. Alright? So it's about branding. What do you want to be seen as? What do you want to be known as? How are you going to package yourself? Okay, now that you package yourself, what part of the shelf are you going to sit? Who are you going to sell yourself to? All right, what's your numbers? How many people in your market is going to buy your records? All right, they're buying your records. How much investment do you need for those people to buy your records? So how much money will I make back? What's your, okay, what's my points? What's my royalties? You know, all these type of things is that they, they, the, the kids now, they don't talk more. They're still in the industry. They're just creative. They get a computer. They get the building tracks, some nice tracks. They're doing writing, some nice songs. But when you talk to them about the business, like, all right, so where do you see your music going? What's your image? What are you putting together? Who's developing you? What's your artist development? You know what I'm saying? What, you know, what do you expect to get back from this? All right, I'm going to give you some money. I need X percentage of my money. Everything you make until I get paid back belongs to me. They don't understand these concepts. The business aspect of the business for Jamaica is where I think we need a little bit more help on. You know, so information is there. No joke. There's a lot of workshops. There are a lot of things. The information is there. However, I always laugh. You bring workshops, you market workshops on the airwaves to people who are already in the studio. You're not getting to the market that you want to get to. Let's go out, get the kids. Let's go where they are so we can give them the information. We're still asking them to come to us, but they're busy hustling. They can't come. I would say it's important to entertainment. So I'm saying it this way to say it's important to entertainment. Entertainment is important to the economy. All right, because through Jamaican entertainment, there is a subsector that survives wholly and solely based on what happens in entertainment. So now it's a cycle. That's the, that subsector survival depends on corporate providing them with the material to survive. I say that to say this now. Here we are, artists, artists makes music, music gets played in the club, in the dance hall, the beverage companies sell alcohol, they sell whatever drink it is, the mom and pops who are vending buys those alcohols and sell at the events, they buy the, the amenities, the, the gums, the chips, the whatever it is. If they're not there to purchase these things from these major corporations, those major corporations will have, be at a loss. So we're each important in, in that in that you know that nucleus that, that that unit. But we tend to separate and go, oh, with corporate. If if the average man is not purchasing from the corporate, the corporate doesn't exist. If entertainment is not giving that average man a reason to want to create that party, that average man doesn't exist. If that cycle of money don't come to encourage us as entertainers to want to entertain, we don't exist. So to me. We're, we're, we're none more important than the next. You understand? It's a unit. It's a cycle. It's that, it's that, that, that commerce is for, for each. We won't all be making the same amount, but we all make it. Well, it put us at a loss. If we're not the ones performing, we're not the ones earning. It put us at a loss. However, I don't knock those international artists for doing what they do. I knock us for not doing what we're supposed to do. All right. Now, I grew up hearing hip hop, a lot of hip hop. I started building rap tracks. I did hip hop tracks. You know, I hung out with hip hop artists. I'm not American. I'm Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? 
when they embraced me, they embraced me for my talent was or for whatever it was I could contribute to, to being around them. When these artists here grew up and hear reggae, I am flattered. You're from somewhere like thousands of miles away and you want to do what I do in my yard on an average day, on an average thing, I'm flattered. Why don't we do it the way they're doing it? I'm not saying let's copy them. I'm saying we go back to the industry and the business. Let's situate ourselves where we can't be left off of those bills. We're brand Jamaica. So you can call your show whatever you want to call it. You won't be a reggae show if we're not there. So you can be there singing reggae. Yeah, that's the music. But we have not positioned ourselves to own brand Jamaica to say, hey, you want to be authentic? It's us. So I'm happy for them who's doing what they're doing. I'm sad that we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right now, I'm more focused with credit team, you know what I'm saying? I'm also focused on trying to give young acts, young producers, an outlet to express themselves. I'm, I'm big with artist development, but then I've always spoken about artist development and not worried and concerned myself with the development of producers and development of engineers. So, you know, that's my vigilante, you know what I'm saying? So, I've had vigilante from when I was in high school. Yeah, you know, that was something they used to run Joe. Um, when I was in high school saying, yo, you always do all the things your way, my youth, well, you're the vigilante. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I am, you know what I'm saying? I do it my way. I take my time and do it my way. So for us here at Vigilante, is more about being a little bit more creative, helping teaching the kids about the business aspect, the music. And I tell people this, man, prepare yourself. I'm going to give him his plug. I give him his due respect. Craig T, Craig T is coming at you all, man. It's, it's going to be... It's gonna be heavy. You know? Vigilante is on social media. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm accessible on social media. Uh, I, I mean the easiest email in the world. It's deanmonday at me .com. You know what I'm saying? That's so simple. It's him. It's at me. So yeah. Hope you liked our video. If so, subscribe. Don't forget the bell for notifications. And give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you're thinking by writing a comment or visit ifetop10.com for more entertainment news. Thanks for watching.